Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how you can create hand-drawn animation in Procreate Dreams and I'm going to be using this Cauldron Halloweenish exercise for this demo. Here's my Procreate scene. I have the cauldron and a background for it. I'm going to select both layers. Then I want to prepare the scene for it in Procreate Dreams. I'm going to mention few but very important things. When you create your scene, you want to make sure you don't click on any of these when it comes to animation of course until you go to these three dots and you want to specify the frame rate 12 frames per second then I'm gonna go with draw don't go to empty because when you click on draw the setup is gonna be ideal because it's gonna set a track for you and it's gonna have you started on a layer now that I have the scene set up here I want to introduce you to a couple of things that I want to make sure that you are fully aware of the first one is the time code here. If you click on it, you will see onion skin, which is going to allow you to see the first, second, third, fourth, or maybe fifth, depending on the setup in different softwares. So if you're on this frame, let's say the ball bounces from this frame to this frame here, and it bounces off. If you're standing on this frame that shows this ball, the onion skin is going to allow you to see later on where the next ball is going to be positioned and where is the first ball is located. So that's why we use onion skin to see through it. Next, I'm going to show you how you can change the background color. Let's say you're painting with something that is not in favor of having the white as background or if you're working at night and it's kind of exhausting to be blinded by the white color in the background. You can check on the background here. You can even go transparent if you want or you can change the color to something that works better for you. Since in my demonstration I do have a background, I don't have to worry about this. Next, I want to show you something that if you're using Procreate newly, you will be missing out on a very useful technique, which is color picking. You can start by creating a template. You can pick the colors that you want. And better yet, you can go online and check certain color palettes that you can go with and you can import that image in here and you can pick the colors from it. But the thing that I want to show you is how do I actually pick the color? You have a palette here and you want to pick a color that works for certain drawings. Well, you click and hold with your finger and now you're gonna see that circle and now you can see how it picks the colors for you. All right, moving on next to Procreate. Now that I do have those two frames selected, you click and hold and then you snap quickly. You can either swipe up or you can click the home button and then you can go and click with your finger on Procreate Dreams and here they are. If you have multiple layers, it's gonna put them in a sequence instead of together for some reason. All right, what I want here is to change the scale. So for this example, what I aim to do is to create smoke coming out of that cauldron and then animate that straightforward. I'm going to also create a base of that smoke so it would consistently be covered here so we don't lose that magical touch. And then I can on a separate layer animate the smoke coming down. So. Before I continue, I want to mention another very important tool in Procreate. If you click and hold two fingers, or if you tap two fingers, it would undo. Three fingers would redo. But if you hold the two fingers, it's going to keep on undoing, which is useful unless you're not aware of it, because then you could accidentally lose a lot of work. Or you can just go three fingers and keep uh, holding, and then it would keep going forward. One of the impressive things about this app is that even if you close your scene, it would still store the undo history, which means you can undo later. But redoing, it's a different situation because one redo and undo could wipe out completely the history of redoing. With that said, I am going to have both these layers selected. If you wanna learn more about the grouping technique, I'll provide a link for my previous video. Click and hold and then group. Now what I want to do is to create a new track that is going to be making the smoke. So click here, track, and I'm gonna make that the smoke. In case you didn't know, if you click on the recent, it would show you all the brushes that you've used previously. And I'm gonna click and hold on that green, and I'm going to paint the smoke. I'm gonna change the scale. So this is gonna cover the base here, and I can even do some animation for it if I need to. But that should be good enough. 
the other thing is that I don't want you to worry about transparency or opacity in this example, for instance, because you can, after you do the painting, you can click here and go to the filter and then go to opacity and then reduce that opacity. This is useful because if you're animating the smoke, you don't want to worry every single frame on the opacity. Instead, all of them would be consistently solid and then you can drop down the opacity later, which makes it much easier. So I'm going to stick to this as a base and then I'm going to create a new track just for the smoke. Now I'm going to start drawing the smoke that I want to draw. Now here is the situation with frame by frame animation. As you're drawing, you need to have a track of where things are headed. And that's where we use the onion skin. Meaning I'm on the first frame here. Okay, I'm going to double tap so it gets really close until I see that plus button here. This is going to allow you to create a new keyframe so you can animate frame by frame. So let's say here is the smoke starting here, going to the next frame. If I click on the plus, it would immediately throw me to a new frame. Problem is I have no idea where the previous frame had the smoke. That's where I go here, show the onion skin, and here it is. And before you have that question of what if my colors are already purple? So that's gonna be confusing. That's where we go into the edit onion skin. You can even choose how many onion skins it's showing. And then you can even choose the uh, coloration. Academically, they use the blue and red for forward and back, but it's a matter of preference. Now that I have this showing here, in purple is showing me the previous frame. So continuing, I'm gonna be painting from here. I'm going to focus more here, and then I'm gonna do some gentle kind of brushing here so it would blend together. Going to the next frame, same thing, blending, and then focusing on this area here and here. And let's say I want to make it kind of expand and expand more. And expand much more. Now if I go backwards, notice this. Yellow is the color for forward and purple is backward. So again, academically, you would want the forward to be blue and the backward to be red. Again, it's a matter of preference. Now I am ready to do the smoke animation. So color here, double tap until I see that. And lastly, before I leave you with a time-lapse or sped up video, see this dash here? If you click and hold and move it down, that's gonna take you to the flip book, which is gonna make that process kind of easier or at least simpler, or you can sort of focus. As you can see, the X disappears eventually. So you tap here and then close it. One more thing. If you tap four fingers, it's going to have full view and look at this. It would give you the option to play the animation. But remember, the animation is not gonna play right unless the frame rate is correct. Let's say you make a mistake and you set the frame rate wrong you can click on the name of the project. You can change the frame rate from here, duration and resolution. All right, with that said, go have fun animating and thanks for watching.